Hi there, I'm Shavik, and I work on human-centered security and privacy. So lately, a key focus of mine has been on building systems to redistribute power and privacy. And I think doing so is important because evidence suggests that every day people are connected, are concerned with the state of privacy on the internet today, but also feel completely powerless to affect any change. I founded the SPUD Lab, the Security, Privacy, Usability, and Design Lab, to address this discrepancy between people's feelings of concern and powerlessness by exploring the question, how might we build systems that empower people with greater agency over their personal data? And I do so by drawing on my core competencies, which I would categorize as the nexus of HCI, security and privacy, and applied AI. Today, I'd like to share with you a sampling of my work in pursuit of this broader vision of privacy for the people, and specifically, I approach this broad vision by tackling three unique but interrelated challenges. So the human factors challenge is fundamentally about answering the question, how can we design systems that make it easier for users to resist intrusive data collection? To that end, my students and I have developed a range of systems to simplify and motivate security and privacy. For example, we've worked on making haptic security warnings that can communicate risk effectively, and on making security and privacy control that are more acceptable for folks with visual impairments. What I wanna to highlight today is our newer work on smart physical privacy barriers, or the use of intelligent physical materials to protect ourselves from unwanted ambient sensing. One example project is smart webcam cover. We designed a webcam cover that automatically covers itself when the LED indicator is off using a thin layer of material called polymer dispersed liquid crystal. Smart webcam cover provides a physical guarantee that spyware cannot activate your webcam without also activating the associated LED indicator and alerting you to its use. In ongoing work, we are developing battery-free sensors that can only be powered through energy harvested from intentional user interactions. Imagine, for example, if your smart speaker literally had no power unless you uncovered it and exposed it to light. So next up is the power challenge. The crux of the power challenge is answering the question, how can we design systems that hold data harvesters accountable to the people whose data they harvest? The broad goal here is to allow users to shepherd regulators and to subvert surveillance institutions. We've worked, for example, on decentralized privacy overlays that allow users to share content on platforms like Facebook without actually uploading that content directly onto Facebook servers. We're also creating a platform to scaffold and support grassroots privacy collective action. What I want to highlight today is our work on subversive AI. So a lot of security work that breaks machine learning is predicated on this assumption that the people deploying machine learning models are good and that those attacking them are bad. With subversive AI, we flip that narrative by asking, what if we employed a human-centered design process to design anti-surveillance technologies that reliably break intrusive algorithmic surveillance? We're co-designing these technologies with marginalized communities that are most harmed by institutional surveillance. For example, we have an active ongoing collaboration with Hacking Hustling, a sex worker collective, as well as minority activist organizations. Finally, the design challenge is fundamentally about answering the question, how can we help practitioners better balance the utility versus intrusiveness of their novel technology concepts? So we've done a bunch of work on this as well. For example, we've employed participatory design methodologies to construct a design space for group security and privacy control. Our work on explainable creepiness helps practitioners understand what makes personal data use creepy. What I wanna highlight in a little bit more detail today is our work on developing privacy through design. So privacy is one of the five most commonly cited ethical principles for human-centered AI, but there's next to no practical design gu guidance given on how to actually design privacy-respecting systems. For example, there's no agreed upon way to answer questions that probably should be somewhat simple. Like, do the utility benefits outweigh the privacy harms of smart glasses for, with facial recognition for law enforcement to quickly apprehend suspected criminals on the loose, or a system that employs NLP to help users configure their audience settings for a Facebook post based on the content of that post? To bridge this gap, we're developing a design methodology for practitioners to foreground consideration of stakeholder privacy as a primary and contrastive value to utility early in the design of consumer AI systems. So I'm gonna end that here with a picture of the hot potatoes, my students in the Spud Lab. And if any of this stuff interested you, please do reach out. I'm recruiting and always uh, happy to speak with new collaborators. Thank you.